Roman, which was only inter available internal. Then another test case management system was being um, introduced, and then uh, sometime in the future there was another, yet another test case management system which is considered to be used, and maybe uh, another one. So uh, we were thinking like it would be nice to um, liberate from, from uh, some of these things and make the stuff uh, on some good place uh, so that if there are any, uh, any such changes, new, uh, new testing system, new test case management system, so that we would be, we would be free. Uh, um, there were different ways how to execute tests. There were, um, yeah, if you, want to, if you wanted to enable tests, then you have to learn uh, one thing here and another thing uh, elsewhere. And in order to debug failures, uh, it was quite hard because, like, um, yeah, executing the test and provisioning the right thing, uh, then adjusting some stuff. So uh, that was uh, that was the start. Uh, I want to try to, uh, try to illustrate this a bit. So that was the make file which which was used. Like, if you wanted to create a test, a simple script, two lines, I don't know. So there was this make file created as from template for each test, and this is half of the make file. Here's the second half of the wake file, which is super nice. Uh, it includes like uh, the description, the type, test time, and it, it is echoed. And, then, and another <laughs> file is created, and from that another file is created in metadata. And it was super, super complex. And uh, so we uh, we did not like that. It was it was really uh, not uh, not very nice. And so we had a couple of dreams. Uh, uh, one motivation. We wanted the test, take the tests and run them earlier, uh, so move them more to the left, open source them, run them as soon as possible. If possible, we wanted to prevent code duplication and minimize maintenance so that we don't have uh, unnecessary, unnecessary work. So have ideally those tests which can be shared at one place and uh, use, that, uh, use them from that place and, um, and share them from that place. Have some tools to easily develop tests, uh, and if there's issue in the CI, so to be able to uh, to reproduce it uh, in, a, uh, in a comfortable way. Uh, many times we uh, we need uh, to like test the uh, test the OS, and uh, sometimes it's okay to test something in a container. Sometimes we need a full virtual virtual machine to test it. <coughs> sometimes we can get it's okay to get some machine from uh, from OpenStack but sometimes special hardware special architecture and we need picker uh, and, uh, and so on so uh, we wanted to be able to run these uh, different environments have this metadata for the test execution stored at one place uh, ideally uh, in some unified way concise human friendly uh, and simple so Comparison with the makefile before, uh, that was our, our idea, for example, how to write a metadata about a test. A summary, a description, contact, test script, maximal duration, maybe compound required or recommended, a recommended package. Or even, actually, when we write tests, usually there is a bunch of tests in a single repository and we don't have to repeat uh, again and again the same information. So maybe, maybe the test metadata could look like this, like just two fields. And we got some inspiration uh, from trees, actually. Uh, uh, it, it starts uh, with a flexible metadata format, FMF, or first we call it Fimple Metadata Solution. <laughs> and uh, uh, this is basically YAML, YAML files, and uh, with added two, uh, two features, inheritance and elasticity. Uh, and thanks to them, uh, thanks to them, we are uh, able to create FMF trees, uh, which nicely organize tests. And um, uh, so we have a Python module which can uh, which can uh, work with these. And there's also a simple command line tool to be able to to investigate to explore what's there. Uh, to to give you some tangible idea about what what I mean by inheritance, uh, so you can you could write a main FMF file. Uh, and here you see there are some required packages and um, the tests belong to some tier, tier 1. And there are two tests, one is download, one is recursion. Uh, they have different descriptions, different uh, way how the test script is called. So you can provide another option or environment variable, whatever. And there's different duration because the one is simple and, and the other, uh, other one takes uh, much more time. So you can have these uh, defined in a single file and it means two tests. This special slash notation means like this is starting uh, here is starting uh, 
the virtual hierarchy, how we call it. And uh, everything which is above is inherited as, as, as it's normal. Uh, so this is the first thing. So if I have uh, 100 tests and all of them are for, for all of them, I need to install one package. I don't have to repeat it 100 times. Very, very, very basic stuff. And the second one is elasticity. And uh, the idea is quite simple. You write your plans, you write your tests, uh, you have like 10 of them maybe, but then it grows and grows and grows and grows and the files get larger and larger. And in so at some point you want to just like as the tree create a new branch. So you take the content and you create a new file uh, so that you can uh, nicely work with, with it. So the same content as was on the previous slide, main FMF contains, contains the common stuff and the download FMF is the one test and recursion FMF is the second test. Everything from the main FMF, something similar like index HTML, like the, the main file in the, in the directory, is inherited. And the name of the file becomes name of the test. And uh, that's basically it. And thanks to this uh, simple concept, we, we are able to organize, uh, organize stuff uh, nicely. So there was FMF, like the trees, uh, created from flexible metadata format. And then the second part was uh, we did some brainstorming about how to like write how the test should be run and that stuff. And we started to put together something we call TMT metadata specification, which describes um, how test metadata, as we've seen at the beginning, like the duration or summary or that stuff, should be should be defined. What's what's the what's the spec? What's the syntax? And this metadata specification de de describes core, which are the common attributes like summary, description, uh, tag, or something like that. And then uh, uh, attributes or keys which are specific to tests, uh, plans and stories, and we will get to that, what, what are the differences. And again, we have the Python module, which, can, uh, which you can use from, uh, from Python to work, uh, to work with it directly. Or, uh, and this is, this is the case for most users, you would, you would use the command line tool, the TMT command which is packaged uh, in Fedora, so you can just DNF install TMT and you can start working. So, uh, so that's about TMT. A couple of words about, about, the, about the specification. So the core is attributes uh, which are common across all the levels. Summary, description, uh, tag are examples. Tests are objects which define attributes which are related to executing of, of a single test, single test case, you, which you describe the summary, the, the description and that stuff. It has some script, environment variables, small stuff, framework, which, which is used to execute the test on duration, for example. And plans uh, is a concept which, uh, which groups uh, uh, a bunch of tests together. So you know you are doing some basic sanity or you test some feature and you have 20 tests for them. So you, would, you, would, you, would have, uh, you can have a plan for, for, for that feature area, for example. Or do some uh, quick tests as a smoke and then a more more advanced features uh, in, in a separate plan. But you, of course you can have just a single plan, it depends on you. And the plans uh, are consisting of several steps and I will be showing some, some uh, stuff on the, uh, in, in the terminal so we will get to them. And stories, uh, quite an interesting stuff. We started and we had uh, many, many ideas about what could be done. And uh, so we started like, we would like to like uh, note, uh, <coughs> have some note what we would like to implement or uh, what to do. And uh, it somehow happened that we, that we created another le metadata level, which we call stories, and those can be used for tracking like the features or requirements. So, you know, I want my tool to be, to have a minimal install, so that like, it's, it's super, super easy to uh, like install. It, it, it's, uh, it's small, it doesn't take much space, but I can do the basic stuff. So we would write the story, uh, describe it, and have it, have it stored there. And then uh, you can uh, track what, what is already implemented, documented, and tested. But I will show that. Regarding to organization, uh, so branches uh, are the place where, like, uh, you have some common stuff, in the branch, and it branches into several several directions. And those places uh, where you are creating the branch is a, is a good uh, is a good location where you can store the common metadata. So again. Let's let's see here. Uh, here we have a couple of plans. Uh, so I create a directory with plans, and there are features, some installation tests, some provisioning, uh, special tests for uh, test, uh, verifying provisioning uh, functionality, our quick quick sanity. 
But all of them have in common that TMT should be installed. So I, I will not specify it four times, but I will, and in that branch, I would put a uh, main FMF, and then down, down in the structure, uh, in the plan, I would specify uh, the individual plants and that stuff. So, basic idea about that. And leaves uh, are considered the actual objects to be executed and, and handled in some way. So, for example, tests. Uh, in the, in, the, in the leaf directory, there you would have the main FMF um, and the test script, and maybe some data, maybe some data which is which is needed. And you would you would um, um, those would be uh, considered as, as the tests themselves, which inherit from <coughs> the parents. And at the bottom, you see there is not main FMF, but there is uh, a simple FMF and complex FMF. So this is something we call virtual tests. You can have a one test script, but you can call it many times with different parameters, different environment, or different install packages. And uh, um, in this way you can again share share the stuff which is coming for them and some extra steps. And finally, uh, one uh, nice and but very important piece of the puzzle to make it working is testing farm. It's a testing system as a service. Uh, more, more documentation is uh, at the link uh, on the slides. And um, basically, yeah, Miro, uh, Milos, with, with Miro, uh, our colleague, uh, they are very, uh, very important persons because they uh, they care a lot of uh, about this testing farm, which actually makes the things working. So um, the TMT stuff and the configs and executing of the test does not work only on a laptop, but you can create a config for packet. You can create a config on GitHub, GitLab, Fedora CI, it's interesting, my Rails CI. You put the same config and it works the same and the tests are enabled and you don't need to learn like okay so how do you enable tests in GitLab and GitHub and uh, here is something special and uh, and on RHEL we use this tool and on uh, CentOS there is that, that tool so basically yeah that's that's one of the best uh, I would say uh, benefits that you learn once and all uh, the same config can be used uh, many times okay so now uh, let's show something Let's show, show, show something. So uh, we are dog footing, so we are using TMT to test TMT, of course. And uh, so let's see what we have. So if I, if I write just TMT, you, you enter some directory, uh, so it would tell you. So here is a bunch of tests, 14 plans, and 170 70 stories, actually. Uh, so if you want to see uh, some uh, <coughs> more information, so you can see, uh, then you can say uh, so. Uh, just just list the tests. Uh, list the tests which are related to duration, maybe. So you see, okay. So I have two tests, and you can you can uh, explore like some more information. So uh, yeah, let's please show me show me what what are these tests about. So you you could <coughs> get the summary, some uh, some uh, information uh, like description, environment, and, and and other stuff. And in the very same way. You can you can uh, you can explore plants. So uh, plants plants list would be uh, would be showing uh, would be showing uh, what are the plants available. So you see we have like organized them for for the features. Then some install test integration provision bigger container. <coughs> um, so that would be uh, for the for the plants. Uh, and uh, let's uh, let's see also the stories. So actually the stories are. Uh, TMT stories, so you see uh, quite a few, uh, but uh, they're not only stories, but you see there's also spec, spec core, spec hardware, uh, spec plans, spec tests. So actually we, we have on the, uh, in our documentation, we have a section called specification, which defines uh, how things work. So you would go there and see so for the tests, so let's speak about the duration. That's the attribute which says like this is the maximum time for test execution. And actually, this documentation is generated from the stories. So if you have the idea, you can describe it in a story, and then you can generate generate a documentation from it and track if it's already implemented and tested and uh, and covered by tests uh, uh, by documentation as well. So uh, that's uh, how the stories work, and maybe last thing about stories. So let, let's see, maybe I can I can show you a story show uh, duration. 
in duration. So you would see, uh, yeah, it's it's there and it's not wrapped, uh, wrapped nicely, but the content is uh, the content is there, and the file actually spec tests duration, and it's quite simple and uh, very human, uh, very human and readable. Summary story description and a bunch of examples. So basically, I'm all, yeah. And and here at the bottom, you can track if the story has been already uh, implemented and ver verified and documented. So, which is which is also nice. So uh, that would be like exploring exploring stuff uh, about the stories, and uh, once once you do the change, uh, you can just make dots and, and you, have, you have the new documentation done. Um, now uh, let's start to play something. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's have a back three pivot. Uh, we go there, and if you would would like just just to experiment with something. Uh, and you don't want to affect your laptop, you can do TMT run uh, provision provision machine, then log into it and then finish it. So in this in this way you can like get it quickly um, and it should work, you just install uh, TMT provision virtual and uh, you don't have to set up the, uh, the VMs how they should work, you don't have to fetch the images or anything you just you just do this TMT run provision login finish and so you see we are provisioning a Fedora box with some memory and disk it gets it gets some uh, name we are using by the way test cloud uh, from our Fedora guys um, a tool which which takes care of the fetching of the images translating uh, the names into into the locations and that stuff so here you see uh, the Fedora 37 was provisioned. It's starting interactive shell, and I should uh, I should get it. Uh, it is still uh, doing some some popping some stuff, so it's uh, a bit a bit uh, a bit slow. But let's see. Uh, but if you are okay, if things are slow, uh, you can always choose another provision method. So let's do provision uh, how container login finish. Very, the very same stuff, but using containers, you get the same stuff. You are, it's it's much quicker. Uh, if you would change the directory, you would see uh, some some stuff there. And we are here, uh, you, and you would get the same. You would get the same result, but much faster. So uh, that's uh, yeah. Uh, for for quick, quick experimenting, this uh, this is quite useful. And I'm I'm using it quite frequently. Now. Um, when uh, uh, to start doing actually something, uh, you would do something like git init, you would do tmt init, uh, but it also has some uh, feature called templates, so you can start with something tmt init minus t template mini, so minimal one. Uh, let's see what we have. There's a plan, uh, tmt plan show, would tell you, okay, basic small test, what it does, interactive false some script will be run on it um, and I can do tmt run and that's it so uh, you have this you have this plan uh, maybe I have I should have shown it mm -hmm. to you it looks like this uh, summary execute command and that's it this is not necessary and this is the default so uh, by two lines if you want to enable a smoke test at uh, two lines is, is just enough and again, we are provisioning a virtual machine, which takes some time. So I want maybe I, I want to do it much faster. So I say uh, run everything, uh, but provisioning will be uh, done using container. So the same thing, the same plan, uh, container much faster. You get the result, and it's it's already finishing while the VM is still preparing, and and it takes some time. And in in the very same way, uh, and that was one of the. Uh, required uh, required features to have the ability to run it in my preferred environment. So we can do run on local in a VM in a container quite freshly this week last week Beaker uh, connect to an uh, existing uh, machine using SSH and Artemis, which is which is the programming service used in testing farm. And here we see it's still running. Okay, VM is a little bit slow, uh, but what was the result? A report. Okay, error. Something went wrong. Tim Tiran last report 
minus V would uh, tell you some uh, some more information. You can do you can uh, see uh, there's some uh, output, uh, but you can also use triple V for triple verbosity, and you will see ah okay so TMT command is not installed of course so that's that's nonsense. I forgot to install something. So uh, you would add a prepare step, uh, install, and the package would be and we did TMT, and that's it. So now uh, let's see TMT, uh, again running using container TMT run all provisional container and we will be verbose so so that we can see what's happening under the hood. And it's slowed uh, because yeah, I, I forgot yeah, I have cached the DNF uh, DNF cache. So let's see uh, I will choose another image for the refresh so it should be fast I believe, yeah so it doesn't fetch on the cache it installs the package uh, the packages all the dependencies and uh, and here yeah something is very slow today mm -hmm. the wi-fi yeah, that's the wi-fi ah yeah it's okay and uh, so, yeah, okay, so downloading, 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 downloading. And, uh, and uh, you would see, uh, you would see that the result should be much better now because the TMT is there. One test passed and you see the output, like the help message works fine. So uh, that would be an example uh, of, uh, of a very simple plan, uh, but usually, um, you would have uh, something like more plans. Uh, so let's see um, more tests. So um, instead of doing some smoke right. test, you would uh, you would say uh, discover tests uh, using TMT uh, using FMF uh, metadata. Install uh, install package and execute all the discover tests. And I would create tests. Let's create TMT test create um, tests good uh, it will be shell uh, test bad template shell and uh, another test which would be wrong again shell so there will be like three tests and uh, each of those uh, of those tests uh, would uh, would have uh, okay so the good one the good one would be running the test script, uh, and we can we can uh, see the test. It does again TNT minus help, but we can check the bad bad one and say it's something went wrong. So there was exit one, and with the wrong test, uh, with the wrong test, let's see we can do something like. Uh, uh, nonsense, uh, like uh, which uh, a command which is not found. So uh, let's try to run these tests now, and we are here done. Nice, TMT run. Uh, but make let's make it super fast. TMT run, uh, run all, provision uh, local. So it will be running on my local box. Uh, if I want to see some more verbosity. You would see. Okay, so this test was passing. This was uh, failing passing, and there was some error. So in this in this way, you can you can see everything how it uh, how it works. Um, and uh, uh, I promised I will be showing you some like of the uh, steps which we have. So the first one is discover, which checks what's uh, which tests are available. Provisioning is the flexibility to provision and run it on a VM container and whatever whatever plugin you will, you will have installed. Preparation for installing packages, doing some shell scripts and that stuff. Execution for executing the steps. Uh, then doing the report. Uh, one nice feature is you can do uh, run last, report, how HTML, and open. So uh, you would you would get some nice output, and you just you can just click on the on the on the log so that you can see what's what's actually what's actually the problem. <coughs> Uh, fine. Uh, so this this is about the, about the steps. A login I've already shown you, and there is also possibility to select just the one plan or test and that stuff. 
Um, and from the examples, uh, maybe uh, maybe last thing. Um, as we've seen, sometimes it can take very much time to like actually set up the guest. So the provisioning part, the VM is slow, the, the Wi-Fi is slow, and you finally install the packages only to find out, oh, okay, so I had syntax error in my in my in my test, and I need to do it again. Oh no no no. So uh, um, that's one of the nice features uh, of TMT that you can uh, do something like. Uh, so let's see, uh, let's see. Uh, we would have the plan, but we would not install. We would not install the package. We would, uh, we would just omit this. And uh, TMT run uh, all. Again, I will be using the fresh container. Uh, so. Um, I would be running a uh, provisional container, uh, but I choose until execute. And uh, this until execute actually means uh, that the steps will not be run uh, everything from the, uh, from the beginning to the, to the end, but only until the execute. And you would see, uh, okay, error, 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 uh, something went wrong, TMT run last report. What was the, what was the uh, how everything everything went, uh, was bad, and I could do TMT run last login, so you can go, get to the guest, and I see. So what was the actual the problem? Okay, I, I did not see the problem. So let me do triple V. Aha, common found. Okay, TMT run last login, and I do DNF install TMT. Yes. Trrr. Trrr. Oh. A little bit faster, and I go, uh, I go back, and I say TMT run last, execute, execute, and it says oh, three done, verbose, ah oh, done, which means like a TMT remembers what has been already done, so you can you have to convince it uh, run it again, force minus minus force, maybe we will have some some better better thing for it, and uh, we see that the good test actually passed, it works nice and then we have failure and then we have uh, uh, the wrong uh, the wrong thing so that's uh, that's in this way you can like in the middle of the guest uh, provisioning and the preparation you can step in do some changes run again or you can you can adjust the test run again and in in this way and one uh, once you are finished you can do tmt run uh, run last um, until finish and it would do the cleanup Get uh, get rid of the of the container and uh, the, uh, of the virtual machine. So from the examples, uh, there's a, maybe a bunch of other nice ideas, but I think uh, maybe maybe you would you will have some some questions and uh, let's let's do some other uh, other thing. Uh, share some nice things about about the code. Much brighter inside the code. <laughs> no, it's not as focused. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, TMT is built around uh, plugins. Uh, as uh, Peter shown, there can be different provisioning uh, methods. So that applies as well to other steps. There can be different discovery methods and different reports, uh, report methods, and so on. So it's all about uh, plugins. And uh, plugins can have uh, usually some options uh, which are coming from those FNF uh, objects or nodes from FNF files that people write and uh, also from command line which is nice. Uh, it's exactly what uh, Peter was showing overriding the FNF content with some command line uh, options. So uh, in, in a couple of slides I, I would just show uh, some examples of, uh, of uh, TMT code, definitely not a, a complete guide, but uh, let's, let's show some examples of uh, what, what we are dealing with, how we work. So if I click this, it will open. Let's see, let's see okay. what will happen. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there's, there are some Python classes that we use to create modules, to make use of some inheritance and uh, uh, parent-child class relationships and uh, parent classes for 
those steps, they take care of creating uh, commands. We are using the Click framework for building the command line and uh, So each of our which steps. Which is zoom out, basically. Mm. Zoom out? Mm. Zoom in. 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 Yeah, it, 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 is not yeah it, it was here, <laughs> definitely. But, right. Thank you. Um, right, so we are trying to sneak our custom classes into what uh, Click is uh, using so we can uh, handle the how option and uh, make it uh, dependent on what plugins were discovered uh, so we can dynamically add plugins without mm -hmm. hacking the hacking the TMT sources so people can have custom plugins and uh, develop their own which is actually happening uh, so we have a uh, custom classes for click to handle the command line inputs but that's just the part of the whole uh, whole workflow because then there are the actual FMF files and uh, as Peter shown there are the there are attributes like the duration and description and these can be overwrite on command line so we somehow have to merge all those inputs together and uh, it started with dictionaries to hold the values and keys and uh, properties of each uh, each plugin and uh, as TMT grew uh, it was getting messier and messier, so recently we switched to data classes, and uh, you now we are having a nice uh, and simple class for defining uh, properties of each of the plugin keys that they accept. Uh, if you can recognize this, uh, this how, that's, uh, that's the how that you saw on the command line. Then there are other shared, uh, shared uh, keys that uh, are same all across all plugins. And uh, since TMT is saving a lot of stuff, a lot of information uh, on disk in some format that can be read, uh, read later, uh, for example, for that uh, last run uh, functionality that you can rerun things, uh, you can get back to guest you provisioned uh, yesterday. So there is a need for saving this information somewhere and loading it back when, uh, when the time comes. So we are trying to work with this uh, without involving the plugin developer so they can focus. So we added some, some methods that take care of transforming these data classes into... Usually it's YAML files if I'm not mistaken, there's nothing, nothing else. And back with some, uh, some activities to save the uh, sa to save the more complex data structures like lists or even custom objects, enums and uh, similar. And if I'm mistaken, right, yeah. Přestaňte poslouchat mýš. Ah, už, už, už. And with this, uh, we, we have three distinct, uh, distinct functions uh, involved in this. Uh, first, there's uh, validation because uh, users, for some reason, make typos all the time. So we don't want to uh, accept keys that are unknown or keys that are undefined and uh, values that are not allowed. So we build these, uh, these step data, data classes. Uh, we enhance them because not all our structures uh, do need validation or, or saving into a file. So it's uh, built from uh, mixed classes that we just uh, apply as, as needed. And uh, it works with the, with the FMF as well uh, because the FMF presents the data as, as, as lists and uh, dictionaries and other similar Python structures that we see every day. And uh, with some help of JSON schema, we are able to validate the structure. We created uh, schema files uh, for this validation. And uh, it's, it's automagical as soon as the FMF node, as, as soon as the 
for example, test class is created to represent a test that's uh, loaded from FMF file. This validation happens in the background and uh, may, may report some, some issues to user. Uh, it's actually quite uh, ugly so far because it's way too JSON-ish, uh, but we are trying to improve that. It discovers quite uh, quite interesting number of, uh, of uh, user errors. Uh, the next one is, uh, we call it normalization, uh, because uh, TMT is quite uh, forgiving. Uh, as you can see, uh, you were shown the way how to, write, how to specify requirements of a test. Uh, it was a list of packages, but it can also be just a package, just a string instead of a list of strings. But uh, it's, it's hard to allow such a schizophrenic situation inside the code. So we have a thin layer which uh, takes these possibly different types of inputs and molds them into a single, single type that's expected in, uh, th that's much easier to handle. There is no, no guessing whether the requirements are just a string or a list. It's always a list of strings in the code. So, this also happens automatically. It's all based on the step data data classes that define the fields, and they uh, and the, the normalization uh, happens on the uh, on the background. For example, this is a very commonly used uh, method which does exactly this. The input can be null. The user for some reason didn't put any value, but felt the key is needed. Sure, why not? Or there's a string or a list of strings. We want to use just a list inside, and this is applied to all the all the plugins, all the structures they define to hold the all the keys they they allow, they support, they accept. And then there's the last one, which is used for saving stuff in in the YAML files. Uh, it's it's as simple as it sounds. It uh, takes the keys and values of the data class and just dumps them in whatever it's uh, it's told to. Uh, we are using YAML, I believe, exclusively as a as a on disk storage format. So the transition between Python and uh, and uh, YAML is uh, usually quite simple. We have built in uh, ways how to serialize more complex data. For example, we have a class to hold uh, the links you saw in stories. There's are implemented by, validated by, and others. So it's a Python object, it's a Python class. And we have ways how to serialize these recursively and uh, not think about it every time we need to add a new class or new attribute. And uh, together we have uh, something, oh, uh, something like this. Is it prepare or finish? Let's say it's prepare. Right, yeah. So this is a class that describes options and uh, FMF keys that are allowed by a plugin, uh, by a prepare step plugin called Shell, which just runs a shell script. So there's a single key, which is a list of scripts to run. Uh, you can see we, we generate uh, command line options from these. Uh, there's a meta bar help text. There's a link to normaliz normalization function or callback to, to use when, when input uh, comes in. We can uh, save it, load it back as needed. Uh, this is actually, yeah, I have a pull request for this because this is not needed anymore. Uh, just like we have the normalize, there's, there's also a way how to attach the serialization callbacks right here into field, but it's not used in this particular example. Yeah, this field thing is super useful. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm quite just happy about one, it. Just yeah. one place, yeah. uh, maybe I could find an example better. Uh, yeah, HTML, the one that generates the, the web page. Yeah, we can handle flags just as easily as anything else. So we are having these data structures. They are attached uh, to their plugin classes. And we can reach 
and find out what the what each plugin thinks about inputs. Are they are they same? Do they need to be transformed to some different shape? And uh, together, just works uh, to to liberate the developer from thinking about how to save stuff on disk and how to think about it. Ah. Uh, the other interesting thing that we went through was uh, where type annotations uh, that we had to add. Well, I convinced you folks that we had to add them because it went well in other projects I worked on. And as TMT was growing and growing and getting more functionality, it was quite hard to change stuff. To There's a better way of tests, but uh, uh, development and environments like editors and, and stuff were not very help, help, helpful. So we started with some annotations and it went uh, well. We have to build them uh, one by one, uh, one file by another gradually, but it took very long to annotate the large central packages, the TMT base, TMT utils, which are a couple of thousands of lines and contain many classes. Uh, the, the, we, we annotated the leaf files, the, the packages and uh, steps and uh, different plugins. And then when all this was done, we started with the central ones and suddenly it all clicked together. Very low amount of troubles actually. Maybe a short survey: How many of you are using pipe, uh, typing annotations when writing code? Yeah. It, it, say, in this case, I'm, I'm not sure whether it applies generally. Probably not. Like more things, but in, in our case, it saves a lot of time, and uh, hopefully, we would be able to improve things a bit because there are still some corners that are left. There's NA everywhere, especially from third-party libraries uh, we are using. Uh, since the dictionaries were part of the initial implementation to hold the values of different uh, keys and, and fields for, for steps and plugins, there are methods that are extremely hard to annotate, uh, like uh, get and opt which do really trivial thing, they just return a value of a key. But since they are not aware of which key, they don't have any access to the typing annotations. So, yeah, any doesn't really help to improve things. So this is uh, the next one on the to-do list, to introduce some kind of annotations to get uh, to, to tie together which option is uh, which, uh, which return value type. Uh, another thing that we will need to work with as, as people start using, uh, using TMT uh, and onboarding more and more teams and they have tests, they have plenty of tests, uh, Cardinal folks are working on theirs, so the number of tests that can appear in the directory in the Git repo can grow quite large. So instead of materializing lists everywhere, like it's done now, we need to switch to some uh, some generator-based stuff. So this is uh, related to annotations as well. We have to redo a couple of internal things, like the TMT tree, which was shown in an example, it returns a list. When it's a couple of hundreds of tests, it can take quite some time. So this is on the the path to speed up things a bit and to save some resources. And uh, since the internal structure is built on some tree of classes, like there's a, there's a run, then there are plans, and each plan has steps, and so on, uh, we want to strengthen the relationship between those two. And uh, since the parent is uh, like the link to upper level, of, of in this tree, we want to not allow uh, just th this very open common class, which is, in which it is defined. It's a base class for all our classes. Uh, we want to allow some generic uh, type uh, to take over, so we can say only a step, uh, only a execute plugins can be uh, owned by execute step report plugins. Their parent is always a report step, and so on. Right now, it's quite open. And uh, 
allows uh, for developer mistakes easily. Yeah. No. Control F5. Jakže? Control F5. Control F5. A. Pardon. Yeah. It's it's clear the future is bright and green and trees are <laughs> everywhere and uh, they grow and multiply. Although there are some rather darkish. Yeah, but those are the old tests. We don't we don't care about them. <laughs> so in the future, the big Python related stuff that's uh, in front of us uh, are multi-host tests, which are common topic, common uh, often requested feature, and it involves uh, some Python coding definitely because uh, right now TMT was uh, single threaded uh, single threaded application, there was just a single thread of execution, uh, there were tests, there were discovered, provisioning, running tests, done. But with multi-host there can be server and clients and they want to run same test at the same time, then another test at the same time on both server and clients, they can have multiple clients, multiple servers, there can be server on Fedora and client on Debian, uh, whatever, whatever they wish. So there will be uh, additional threads, there will, be, uh, th there will have to be a synchronization. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Uh, there will have to be a synchronization so we can uh, assure the developers and queries that the tests will run at the same time. Uh, this affects also reporting. There are conflicts on f uh, on disk uh, on file system level, like uh, overwriting files because it wasn't really ready for one test to be running multiple times in the same plan on different uh, machines. Files were overwritten, so this was rebuilt and uh, modified and extended to allow plenty of different combinations. And we are slowly starting to. Uh, build up on this to allow different provisioning to, to play together like the Fedora server on a virtual machine and the Podman client uh, running on, on some, some other machine somewhere else. So th this is a huge uh, topic for us, mm -hmm. a very often requested feature. And uh, the, another, but, well it's a but piece of mine, uh, different uh, provisioning services that TMT and testing farm supports. Uh, we can get machines from various different provisioning services from OpenStack uh, to your local laptop. Uh, we've been dealing with, uh, we, we, we were used to Beaker where the different hardware requirements like the number of CPUs uh, it's expressed in some XML filtering language one has to put together with all those nice uh, tags and attributes uh, and it's uh, amazingly easy to read and extend and uh, since OpenStack and AWS and Azure and Google they, they have different view they, there are instance types and uh, flavors that have their properties and you can't create your own you can pick one of the prepared ones so these two sort of have to play together in the tests so what we don't want to end up with is seven different, uh, seven different uh, languages or ways how to ask for a number of CPUs. That, that would be completely useless to us. So one of the bigger projects uh, is uh, implementing the hardware requirements as a unified, uh, easy to understand set of uh, constraints that one can store in the plan or test FMF. From a file, and if you use uh, the provision plugin for OpenStack, you would get corresponding flavor. If you use uh, Libvirt, Libvirt plugin would create VM corresponding to the requirements with enough memory or virtual disk size, and so on. So this is something that we hope to somehow uh, get into working. We are using it in the testing farm provisioning already. Uh, but it's not part of TMT, which uh, would allow 
users to use it uh, in their daily workflows. Right now it's only in, in available only in CI, so we want to port it and uh, make it part of the of the uh, of TMT. Right, and I think it's uh, one of the last ones. Uh, one very commonly requested feature is something like a wizard um, that would help people to run common things, like uh, with some selection or by, done by numbers or ABCD or S for SSH to guest. So th this kind of uh, wizard that one would run and uh, provision with a uh, press of a single single key on your keyboard, then SSH to machine, rerun the test, and rerun the test, and rerun the test until it's done, or just throw the machine away, change some, some environment variables, and try again without uh, remembering the options one has to use on command line. It's, it's possible. One can create a command line to log into machine, do the thing, log out, run the, run the tests again via TMT command line, but it would be nice to have some more interactive uh, environment where one could repeat those steps without uh, remembering uh, too much stuff. And uh, yeah, and more features, uh, more goodies that we want to offer, build to, to, to improve the tools that we use for testing. We want to get the consistent environment in uh, CI and the one that I get in uh, virtual machine on my laptop because often they are not same at all like that there's a one image used in CI another in VM another in Podman so we want to unify this so one can pick a CI profile and apply to a Podman automatically and get the get container as close to what would they get in CI when the test was running to reproduce the issue uh, to reproduce a failed test, uh, verify the bug, or, and so on. And we want to introduce more, uh, since we are uh, dealing mostly with RPMs, we want, to all, uh, we want to have a plugin that would install a lot more stuff than just RPMs, uh, modules, copper belts, uh, yeah, and less possibilities. And uh, the environment combinations, uh, different architectures, different uh, images all together running tests across a, very, uh, across a wide matrix if that's what you want. If not, if you, if you as a developer are happy with a simple workflow, running a test in a podman, then making a commit into Git, run it in CI, fine, but if you want to if you have to run tests on seven different architectures, three uh, hundred different tests in, in seventy plans, we should be able to support that as well. I guess that's the end. Any additions before we dive into questions? Any questions? Any questions? Comments? What's the biggest bug you have to fix? Because bug. Uh, encoding features. More most critical, let's say. Mm -hmm. I would say it's it's all again and again multiple testing. Please add support for multiple mm -hmm. testing. Add support for multiple testing. Yeah, if features are allowed, then yeah, it seems to be the multi-host uh, testing because it means people want to run a test on server and a client at the same time, which is, as soon as there's one more, it just tears down the single threaded structure that was built into the tool. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether, whether it's going to be a hundred clients and a server, as soon as there's one more, we have to, we had to change a lot of stuff. Thank you. We're almost there. Almost there. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah. it works. Yeah. Two people already tried. <laughs> That's like two more than a year ago. Okay. I must admit, I'm like really excited from your presentation, and I feel like I can't wait to go home and try to write some tests with this. Uh, if I understand correctly, we are showing us how to test TMD inside VM run by TMD. Mm -hmm. 
or provision? Provision by yes. yes. Yeah, what yeah. I was showing, like uh, the the, uh, the default provisioning, we want to like to make uh, it safe. So if you run tests on a laptop, you can feel safe that it uh, does not install or remove something from a laptop. Mm -hmm. So the default provisioning method is uh, VM. So it spins new VM, installs the tests inside and the requirements, and runs everything uh, inside. Yeah. Okay. So I have two practical questions. Uh, when you shown the like test report in HTML, uh, is that tool able to generate JUnit uh, XML report? Yes, that's yeah, one of the. There's plugins. a plugin for it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. There's an app for everything. So <laughs> there's a plugin for JUnit. And the second question is. Uh, if my uh, like subject of the test is a command line tool, but it's like a system of nine VMs communicating oh. with each other, well, and I don't need thing. to run the test on the client <laughs> and server at the same time, I'm fine. I want to be like external observer mm -hmm. trying to like connect to different nodes and run some APIs. Is it possible to use this tool for it? Like not yet. VMs? Not yet, but that's the multi-host stuff that we are working on. Uh, TNT does connect to those machines. Like, if you by observing from outside, that's exactly what TNT does. It connects to some machine and runs something there. But uh, if you want uh, nine different VMs and run things on them, not there yet. But it's actually what we are working on. Is the multi mm. support. I'm not sure whether you are a bit. Like imagine, imagine I have a like bunch of Terraform magic mm -hmm. and Ansible magic to like set it up, and then from oh. external host I'm calling some API and checking stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to use this tool for it, or would you recommend something different? Mm. <coughs> I believe that it's it's one of the use cases we want to also echo uh, support. That uh, one uh, option for the multi -host, uh, test execution is that they are like executed from TMT and then they run in some way they sync. And the other option is that to have something like an orchestrator, a special guest, or the TMT itself, that's a questionable, which would be doing some, yeah, do, do something on that guest and something else on the, on the other one, check this API, fetch this, and uh, uh, in this way. So it could be one of the, one of the uh, set of the guests from the, the multi-host setup, and one of them could be doing like this orchestration, uh, and th that should be that should be possible. And I, we, we had a couple of discussions whether like it should be possible like do this or orchestration itself from the TMT itself from the, from your laptop, or it should be a dedicated guest or container or something. But um, we expect, or I, I believe, like for this for this type of testing, this this approach. Uh, it is better than our original way how to do the multi-host testing. So I believe in the future we definitely would like to uh, have, this, uh, have this possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't have pro provisioning plugin for Terraform, so creating the like s more complicated than simple topology is not yet available. You would have to write. Uh, you would have to do it on your own, like uh, call the Terraform, whatever is needed in a prepare step, for example, and, and create the topology, and then somehow connect to it. No, no idea how that, uh, how that works, but uh, I believe it should be doable sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Like in the prepare step, I could call shell script, which calls... Yeah, you can call shell script, you can call mm -hmm. Ansible playbook, mm -hmm. we have those. Something like uh, partial uh, support for multi-host testing is, is there one, one example which already works like there. It's possible to do preparations, preparation step uh, on a selected guest only. So we would say like prepare install HTTP on the server, do some uh, like start the service on the server, prepare the page and on the client run something and then execute. But this, this is a super, super basic one and uh, we plan to absorb this by the support for parallel execution. We have one more question. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> so, like, have you thought about leveraging Ansible to do all that stuff? <laughs> because, like, SSHing to a bunch of hosts and, like, doing stuff on them, that's pretty much exactly what Ansible is all about. Right? Yeah, but uh, we have experience with writing tests in Ansible, and it's not a good experience. 
it's, but I mean, it's, a it's been a painful experience. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, it's a Red Hat product. Like, there's yeah, and, and we should, uh, we have a plugin. If you have uh, feel, if you feel the need to run stuff through Ansible, sure, yeah, it's definitely support. I, that's not what I was going for. I was going for like, if you have to do something with multiple hosts at the same time, mm -hmm. then Ansible is usually kind of like the way to do that, to automate that. You have Ansible Runner, you feed it the right way with the plugins you want, and you know, just do whatever you want on those hosts. It yeah. seems like... Well, I, I don't know if it's the right tool for this job. We actually uh, like uh, one uh, one of the like the motivations and the, the hazy <laughs> the hazy forest at the beginning was <laughs> we started with uh, using the standard test interface which was uh, written uh, or the spec was written for for, for Ansible and then the standard test rules were, were and are written in Ansible and they execute so they can be used in Fedora still but uh, like doing such simple thing like I want to just run a test. And safely, uh, using 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 this uh, um, yeah this this framework or how to call it um, uh, was uh, super uh, uncomfortable. And one of the things was like uh, you have some specific use cases. I would say for uh, for the test execution, you want to see at, uh, for example the test output or the preparation. You, you want to separate something. You want to separate the preparation from the test execution and see what failed, if it was like a real failure of the test or it was the preparation problem and that stuff. You want to do something like the reporting and uh, uh, you want to uh, see the results of the tests uh, and hand handling that stuff. And I, I believe that like Ansible uh, is it's using yeah a tool for another thing. So we. Uh, we believe, I would say, that the Ansible is super, super good for the preparation uh, of the guests and installing all the stuff and uh, enabling whatever is needed and, and so describing the status of the guests uh, and that's that's why we have it as a, as a prepare plugin. So it's possible to uh, to use the playbooks for, for setting up the guests. But uh, for the testing, I would agree with Miloš that like there are some special use cases you just want to have like nicely, tidy, comfortably prepared for the testing. Yeah, we are actually using Ansible in testing farm, but for what it's supposed to do, for preparing machines, like setting up uh, environment variables, installing packages, this kind of stuff. But we tried to, like implementing any sort of higher logic in playbooks, that, that, that's not like, a pleasant experience. That aligns well with what I See, <laughs> I'm sure it's possible, but you don't actually. I mean, like you don't really want to do that. You're completely right. You know? Yeah, so. it's definitely possible to implement Oracle database in assembler, but it's not a nice weekend. <laughs> so it has definitely a good uh, use case. We are using it. We rely on it. We want to use it for the the, the unified environment I spoke about. We want to have a set of playbooks for Fedora, for Fedora CI. They would have a set of playbooks. If you run this, you get the Fedora CI environment. Run it. We run it in Fedora CI. You run it on your local development environment in a VM on your laptop. You get the Fedora CI environment there. You should get as close as possible to reproducing the testing environment. This would be done with uh, Ansible playbooks, but implementing the logic, the steps, uh, conditions, that, that, that's not uh, very... Yeah, I don't think it's a right tool for, for this job, for managing the, the logic, for taking care of those steps and propagating the, the workflow through till the end. Now, showing just just now maybe one of the things I mentioned at the, at the beginning, uh, one of the motivations for us was like to prevent duplication and share uh, test code as much as possible. So here's an example. If you have uh, some common storage for tests, uh, this is this is the super simple way to say like uh, when I'm doing a new uh, I'm packaging a new new RPM into Fedora, I can say run tests from my upstream. And that's it. 
you can you can just point there uh, or uh, here. This is this is actually from the uh, RPM steam space. So um, um, that's that's the way. Um, you don't have to uh, have some complex setup to actually fetch the test, unpack test, prepare or something. You just point to the repository. Here are my tests. Here are my other tests. Here are my downstream tests, upstream tests, and you can share them and maintain at a single place. I guess it would be possible if we uh, like start with a playbook and write our own modules, for instance. Like, so, so we would have this, but. Uh, Big Python module for Ansible, which would implement the functionality. But then we can get the command line yeah, and for, nice for commands and reports for free if we just don't do it. Uh, well, that's not for free. Uh, I speak from experience that it's. Uh, I mean the the no. TMT and click and the building command lines and this stuff. If we go this way that we took, we get the command line plus all the stuff that we have to implement in the Ansible module anywhere. So it's just easier to not do it. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, we have one last question here. Uh, yeah, there, uh, you had when you were showing uh, like the code for sharing uh, configuration, and you said that you can just point to some repository, does it mean that it will like, download and discover tests from the default branch of the GitHub repository. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. different branch if you want. And it will like run the code blindly. Um, <coughs> no. Or can I specify some like checksum of something? Uh, yeah. Not yet. You can specify a uh, checksum. Uh, but blindly, well, you pointed to that Git repository. <laughs> so it's not very blind. But yeah, I, I see the point. Uh, no, there's no checksum implemented yet, so there's no uh, down. It's running Git call basically. Mm -hmm. and so then executing. Yeah, whatever you whatever you say in that FMF file to run, <coughs> TMT will run it because it's it's there. It's what you told yeah. TMT yeah. to run. Yeah, yeah, you have to delegate uh, the source, but yeah, the default case. For example, here you just uh, take the test, you discover, you you git uh, you git clone, and you do the discovery. But uh, actually, they would be run in a VM, so like your laptop should be safe, uh, uh, unless there is some. Uh, as we had some nice nice uh, nice nice bugs in the in the discover step implementation. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. In general case, you, you should be you should be safe. You can specify if you don't want to get like something broken. Uh, the discover step, TMT, um, discover how FMF help uh, tell you like the what's what's uh, what's available and one of the options so you can specify a, a ref so a commit mm -hmm. so you can freeze it to a specific commit for example you, you are sure that in this state it's okay so you can say uh, uh, take it from from here take it from here make it freeze uh, but th there are some some nice nice stuff also like uh, if you are uh, um, fetching the test, sometimes you can uh, have some tests which are newer, and the features for those uh, the tests which are covered by those tests are not yet uh, implemented in, in some specific version. So it's possible uh, also to uh, to use something uh, we call uh, context adjustment. So based on the context, you can say that uh, something should be done in a different way or some test. Should be uh, some tests should be um, skipped. skipped or modified. Maybe I would give some. Yeah, yeah here. So so the test is uh, enabled uh, by default, but if the, if destroys uh, less than Fedora 33, uh, it's disabled because it was not there, and, and such some such stuff. Or there might be something like uh, packages. Package has been uh, renamed. Uh, in newer in newer version of uh, CentOS or something like that, so you, you update the require and and use a different one, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Are you staying a little bit longer with us?